الصحاري والرمال اجتمعت على أرض واحدة وعلى قلب رجل واحد واتحدت فصنعت مجدا عظيما برجالها إنها دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة دبي إحدى دانات دولة الإمارات السبع هذه الإمارة التي تميزت في مختلف المجالات وانطلقت إلى العالم بفكر يواكب التطور بمختلف مجالاته طرقت بابا جديدا بدءا من العام الماضي يحمل رسالة سلام إلى العالم تحت مسمى مؤتمر دبي العالمي للسلام والذي يتماشى مع الرؤية الثاقبة لصاحب السمو الشيخ خليفة بن زايد آل نهيان رئيس الدولة حفظه الله وأخيه صاحب السمو الشيخ محمد بن راشد آل مكتوم نائب رئيس الدولة رئيس مجلس الوزراء حاكم دبي رعاه الله بجعل دولة الإمارات أرض سلام لكل من يبحث عن الأمن والأمان والسلام كانت البداية في مركز المنار الذي يشيع بالنور من خلال خدماته الجليلة والذي يحظى برعاية كريمة من صاحبة السمو الشيخة هند بنت مكتوم بن جمعة آل مكتوم حرم صاحب السمو الشيخ محمد بن راشد آل مكتوم حفظه الله حيث كان لدعمها اللامحدود الفضل في إنجاح مؤتمر دبي العالمي للسلام في دورته الأولى وبعد نجاح فاق التوقعات في الدورة الأولى للمؤتمر صدر مرسوم لتنظيم المؤتمر في دورته الثانية تحت مظلة جائزة محمد بن راشد المكتوم للسلام العالمي ليبرز خصائص ديننا الإسلامي ومزاياه باعتباره عقيدة سمحة تتجلى فيه قيم التسامح والاعتدال والوسطية بهدف مد جسور التسامح مع الحضارات الأخرى والتواصل معها وتعزيز العلاقات الدولية تحقيقا للسلام العالمي وبإشراف مباشر من حكومة دبي ومع الإعلان عن مؤتمر هذا العام احتشدت الجموع في إمارة دبي لتطلق رسائل سلام عبر الجو البر والبحر لتصل إلى العالم معلنين من خلالها بأن دبي قادرة على نقل هذه الرسالة مستندة على المفاهيم المتجذرة في القيم الإسلامية والمتجسدة في تقبل الآخر والتعايش مع جميع الطوائف والأديان بما يكرس الاحترام المتبادل لتعطي دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة المثال الحي عن التعايش الإنساني بل تتعداه إلى الانسجام والعلاقات الإنسانية مع رسالة السلام التي تطلقها للعالم دبي ترحب بكل ضيوفها وبلغة سلام ديننا الإسلامي الحنيف تقول السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Mr. Ahmed Hamid Al Manar, Quran, Quran Study Center, Dubai. A small story I would like to share with you sure. and to one and all. I had gone once to Mecca. I went to Mecca and I was praying there, and there was another person praying with me on the side. And after we finished our prayers, he asked me, what's your name? I told him, my name is Mohan. So he understood that's not an Arabic name, but I'm named Mohan. I said, he looked at me, he said, it's so nice that you're sitting with me. As you have taken up Islam, I just want to share with you something that please keep it with you and continue what you're doing. I said, what am I doing? He said, you're praying with me. He said, in the time of Prophet Muhammad, at that time, our faith was so strong that if we held up water, water, and open your fingers, the water will still remain. That was the faith. 
He said, Mohan, now you remember. All these years have passed. The water, by opening my fingers, have all been washed out. But the wetness of the water still remains in my hand. But please, continue praying because that's the only thing left with us so that this water will not dry up. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Respected dignitaries Religious leaders Brothers and sisters Ladies and gentlemen I greet all of you with the greetings of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh which means peace, mercy, and the blessings of Almighty God Allah be upon all of you. I first thank Almighty Allah for giving me this opportunity to be here. I thank United Nations, the organizers, the people who are involved in making this event possible. And I thank each one of you to be here. I actually came on a very challenging time. And I know for many of you at the moment, peace is taking a nap. Right? Because this is the time, and I, I'm, I'm occasionally uh, you know, uh, mentioned by the organizers that one thing is guaranteed in Ahmed Hamid's speech people don't sleep whether they understand or not people don't sleep so I hope that all the body and soul can come back with the uh, clear attention because uh, you know peace is is a very relative term so you might be talking about peace but I am having my peace you see so, uh, interfaith dialogues are really significant and we need to realize that unless we have that dialogue, we will not come to know each other. Unless we get engaged and talk to each other, we cannot, we cannot uh, you know, progress. And I remember a story of a couple, a funny story, where the couple, they fought with each other and they decided not to talk to each other. And their communication is only by writing. So anything that the, the, the husband wants to communicate, he gives a slip and then wife receives it. And same with the wife as well. So one night the husband, he writes on the slip, says, wake me up at 6 o'clock. And the, the wife receives the, sleep, uh, the, the slip and next day morning it's 10 o'clock. So... The, the, the husband, he gets up, he yells at her, shouts, breaks the law of not, talk, of not, of not talking to, to her. And he said, why didn't you wake me up at, at 6 o'clock? I told you to wake me up at 6 o'clock. It's, it's 10 o'clock now. She said, I did, but in a written form. <laughs> so what she, did, what she did, wake up at 6 o'clock. So it's passive communication. So dialogue is, is really important. Why? Number one, it develops understanding. It bridges gaps. It increases the feeling of care and cooperation. My dear brothers and sisters, respected dignitaries, perhaps I'm among the youngest among in, the, in the panel, but my heart cries out by looking at the situation that we are going through. Peace is the need of every individual that exists around us. And bringing people on the same level of understanding about peace 
is the need of the hour. And same is sought for human progress and success. When we look around us, let's be realistic. Let's see how peace is disturbed and how the absence of peace is immense. If you look at the statistics, my beloved brothers and sisters, if you look at the statistics, every single year, one million people, they die because they commit suicide. One million people, which means every 40 seconds, one person is dying because they are committing suicide. Every single year, 7.8 million people, they die because of hypertension, which means every four seconds, one person is dying because of hypertension. Why? Because of stress. There is no happiness. Money is there. Wealth is there. Every position and everything is there. There is no peace. Every single year, 5 million people die because of alcohol, which means, which means every 17 seconds, one person is dying. Because of smoking, no less than 6 0.5 million they die every single year. Why? Because there is no peace. I would like to share with you just three points which you may take it as an action recipe for peace. Number one, what is Islam and how it basically provides the understanding of establishing the peace? Number two, the role of youth. And number three, how important are these kind of gatherings in bringing all of us closer to bring peace back in this world? So to begin with, Islam comes from two root words, salam and sirm, which means peace and submission. And anyone who submits himself to Almighty God, Allah, is termed as a Muslim. Islam is a prescribed way of life given by Almighty for the humanity. Islam is a system which prescribes certain practical teachings, certain practical framework which results and make people prevail peace. And this goes in three levels, in three areas. Number one, a person who submits himself to Almighty God, he actually gains peace within, he makes peace with the Creator, and he actually results that peace with the creation. Almighty Allah, he says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanattaqullah haqqa tuqatih Allah Almighty says, Oh, you believe, be conscious of your Maker. This consciousness develops when we submit ourselves to Almighty God. And when we develop this consciousness, this closeness to Almighty God, this awareness of Almighty God, it basically results in the kindness, in the compassion, in the peace, in the actual mercy with the creation. So the, 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 the point is, when we submit to that Almighty God, the one single creator who created the entire thing, every one of us, when we submit to Him, we actually gain peace within. And that peace basically gets to the next level with the peace with, with the rest of the people. So first thing is the submission. Out of submission, you actually gain that consciousness. And this consciousness demands that you need to have a role model to follow the life which is full of peace. And in Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is regarded as the final role model. The role model for the whole of humanity in order to present a, a way of life, a framework, a system that basically prescribes how to live 
peacefully in this world and how to gain peace forever. As he was meant by Allah Almighty, the, the purpose of sending Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, itself was to basically give mercy, compassion, and peace. Allah Almighty says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, except as a mercy for the whole of humanity. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the role model whom we emulate, we copy in terms of understanding the direction of peace. One funny thing happened when I was watching this, this timer, it was going back. And I, I, I tend to see, okay, good that I have a timer. But after first speaker finished the lecture, it stopped working. So I said, okay, so I don't have to look at it. And Mr. Mohan, he took two, three minutes of mine by sharing the story, so I should be justified by giving one more two minutes. So I was saying, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came as an example, as a leader for showing and the compassion, the real, actual way of pr promoting the peace. That's number two. Number three, my beloved brothers and sisters, is unless you and me become conscious of our action, our own actions, we will never be able to gain peace. Unless I have that consciousness that tomorrow I will be standing in front of Almighty God and will be questioned about each and every good deed that I will have done and each and every evil that I might have committed, this consciousness demands that I must establish peace within myself and I must prevail peace on the, on the face of the earth. And that basically results these three factors, that is believing in one almighty God and submitting him and following that role model of peace, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and developing this consciousness of, of being accountable for our own actions. These three things results into one key element and that is justice. When we have these things, we become just. We deal with justice, justice with our own selves, that we don't kill ourselves. Allah Almighty says, do not kill yourself. Allah Almighty goes further. The peace that we are talking about, the, the, the theme itself is peace in, at home builds peace in the world. So beginning with our own self, we do not kill ourselves. We are relaxed. We have trust in Almighty God that things will be better. The world will have a better place to live in. It will have a positive impact when we have this consciousness in our mind. And, and it goes further by, by talking about the peace within the family. Allah Almighty says in chapter 17, verse 23, ihsana. Allah Almighty, He declares that, there is a, you, that it is decreed that you worship none except Allah Almighty and you be kind to your parents. The role of parents in making sure that they, you get the blessings helps you to gain peace in your own lives. Same with our children. Let them be the ambassadors of peace. Same with our spouse. Let them have that understanding and the objective which Almighty God says, Litas kunu ilayha, so that you may tr find tranquility, contentment in them. So when we have these three things, the result is the justice comes in place. And by God, this this command by Almighty God comes as an as a emphatic statement uh, with which I would like to end in, 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 a, in a minute. Allah Almighty says in chapter 5 verse 32 about the, the sanctity of the human life. Allah Almighty says that if anyone kills a single human being, it is as though he has killed the life of the whole of humanity. And it goes further, it says, if you save a single life, a single innocent life, it is as though you have saved the life of the whole of humanity. It comes as a benefactor for the humanity. Respect in Islam for humanity is guaranteed by Almighty God. When he says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam," And respect the Allah Almighty himself gives the honor for the whole of humanity. 
I would like to mention this and we will end uh, uh, with, with my discussion. The role of youth, all the youth who are listening to me, you are responsible for bringing the better impact, the positive change in the lives of the people in the world. And I would like to thank once again for having these kind of gatherings. As I said, dialogues can discard differences, builds positive understanding and develops care and cooperation in the hearts and minds of everyone. Thank you so much for your patient listening.